The new Insolvency Rules 2016 are allowing insolvency practitioners to communicate in ways much more in line with modern business practice. One of the ways that they're doing this is allowing for e-communication to be used more freely. If e-communication was used customarily before insolvency proceedings began, then they can be used going forwards. The content of uh, documents and forms used to be prescribed by statute. Now, the content of those forms and documents is set out by the rules themselves. The intention of this is to prevent the rules having to be updated regularly in future and allow them to adapt to changes in future technology and business practice. The use of websites has also been opened up, so documents can be served by posting them up on a website and giving notice to creditors that they've been posted. Uh, as soon as notice to creditors has been given and the documents have been placed on the website, then they're deemed to be served. There are some exceptions to this. Uh, these include documents not delivered generally, uh, notice of an intention to declare a dividend, and documents which need to be personally served. There's been a reintroduction of the requirement for an administrator to file, file a final progress report and send notice to the registrar of companies. Once registered, the notice converts the administration to an insolvency. If any relevant activity occurs between the sending of the notice and the registration, then this will be captured in the first liquidator's report. Creditors can now opt out of communications. Under the old rules, communications would have to be sent out to all creditors, regardless of whether they wish to receive them or not. Creditors can now opt out. At a later date, if they wish to, they can opt back in, so it's not a final decision. There are certain communications, which are seen as key communications, which can't be opted out of and have to be sent to everybody, such as notice of a change of liquidator, change of contact details for a liquidator, intention to distribute a dividend or notice of a dividend, and as a result of a court order, a notice which, be, which must be sent to all creditors. The changes in communication which we've been discussing today have the intention of alleviating some of the administrative burden on the insolvency process. However, as we've just been discussing, the opting out provisions may place an additional administrative burden on insolvency practitioners. They're going to have to make sure that they carefully maintain lists of all the, all the creditors, the creditors who have opted out, and the creditors who haven't opted out and will be receiving certain communications. These lists will need to be carefully managed in order to comply with the new rules. We hope you found this video useful, but if you have any questions, then please get in touch with us.